Okay guys, we want to do some administration on our SQL Server 2022 Express Edition database here, or SQL Express database. But we've got some access users that are using a front end and holding the database open. And it says cannot detach the database because it is currently in use. Some user way out in an office somewhere is using this. We want to kick them out. So we did some administration that we're going to learn today. And now when we hit our go button there, our execute button, now we can do our administration. We can detach that database. That's what we're doing today. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access on SQL Express playlist. And we're going to take a look at how to kick users out of a particular database on your server. Now, this can be for any number of reasons. You have to do some maintenance on the database backend, or you have to move servers, detach and attach databases, or backup res restoration, or any of those kind of things and invariably you end up at a situation where you're looking at a message that says this database is in use. Now luckily one of the secret powers of using SQL Express or SQL Server itself as your backend for your access database is that you have server controls and so you can very easily kick all the users out of their sessions and then do whatever maintenance you need to do. So let's take a look at that today. We're going to take a look at how to kick all the users out of sessions on a particular database on SQL Express or SQL Server. Let's get to it. Interested in more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay guys, this is a pretty cool one today. We're going to learn how to kick users out. And in order to get users connected, we're going to use Microsoft Access just like we do in most of our other apps. We're going to do a linked table to our uh, SQL Express backend and we are going to use a DSN that I created already uh, just for simplicity and uh, as you can see there's a ton of tables there but we're just going to grab the one table that we created in SQL Server and we can double click our new table link there and we can open it up you can see there's no data in that table and uh, we can uh, rename that Typically, I rename them to match the table names that I create in SQL Server, but you can name yours however you like. And there we go. We've got our CNN underscore test table with no rows in it yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a bunch of different copies of that. And that's going to simulate having a bunch of users that are connected to your SQL Express backend. So let's go ahead and copy that file and we can right click and paste it in there. And we can right click paste that a few times. Let's make a few copies there. And that's going to allow us to open up a bunch of different um, sessions against our server. And that is going to simulate sort of a multi-user environment. And so each of these guys here, I can double click to open. Uh, let's go ahead and open that one. We open the copy. We'll open this one. I guess we can enable content. It doesn't really matter on this one because it is just a table connection that we're showing. Uh, there's the second one. Let's grab the, uh, the third one. We'll go ahead and enable that. And then the fourth one. And that'll give us uh, four connections to SQL Express. Okay, let's go ahead and grab that fourth one. That's copy three. And that's going to give us four open Microsoft Access uh, sessions there. And those each have their own connection to SQL Server. Um, and so they have their own session running on there. And that means that we can use that for testing. Uh, there we go. So we've got all four. Uh, now we can sort of go through and we can do different things on this one table. So let's go ahead and open this table here and uh, we could type some test data in here. We can type in, you know, my record one or something. Tab off of that. The, the date stamp there was, uh, was a default of now, so we don't have to worry about that. Open another one of these uh, sessions. We'll, we'll start the second record. Um, and you can see that one gets completed when we tab off of it. So you can see it has the first record in there. On the third record, let's just start a record. Uh, so we'll start my record three. 
um, you guys will start getting a sense of how these sort of locks and things work. So that started a new new record on the server, but it's still editing it. And on this fourth one here, uh, we could do, you can see that the third record doesn't show yet because it hasn't been committed yet. And, uh, but we'll type in my record four, which actually gets ID three because it completes before this one here. But we're gonna leave this one open and just to give you an idea of how these things kind of work when you've got a bunch of users that are connecting to the back end, and some of them might have uh, data that's open already. Um, some of them might have most of their data closed, and so they won't actually show as holding the database open. But Okay, there's the little create table statement that I showed you just a moment ago there, and we don't need to save that for now. Uh, so now what we can do is we could click in as if we're Opening, opening our database in the context of master here as if we're doing some, you know, some kind of administration that requires us to have the, you know, full control of the database, exclusive access to the database. But it happens that there are some users still using it, therefore holding the database open. It is still in use. And so we can try to do something like, you know, SP detach database which is going to detach the database files from the server. And we could try, you know, doing something along those lines. Uh, we can put go on there and then hit execute on our toolbar. And you'll see that it kind of spins away there. Um, it's waiting, it's checking to see if people will get out, I guess, or, or I'm not sure why it takes so long to do this particular step. But it eventually, after executing here, Eventually, it's going to give us this message and it's going to say, uh, you know, cannot detach the database, a CNN testing because it is currently in use. And this can be the bane of many a developer. Uh, you run into this message and, you, and you're like, I don't know who has this open. Uh, there could be a million, you know, ways that it's open. You can go and look in into the logs and things to find out who actually has it open. Uh, but that takes a lot of time. And this is what I fondly call the sledgehammer approach, where you just boot everybody out. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward approach. Basically what we're gonna do is we're going to create a, a big long string uh, command that's going to look up all the session IDs that are currently open on a particular database. And it's going to issue a kill statement for each of those and that's going to unceremoniously dump everybody out of the database. Maybe you gave people advance warning already and they're still holding some records open or they left it open and went, went away for spring break or whatever. Uh, you, you can have a hundred different ways that this can still be left open. It could even be, you know, I've had things like pinch network cables and things like that that cause a database to remain open or a connection to remain open, I should say. And so those can be really um, terrible to deal with. So this is gonna help a lot. So we're creating a, a, a variable character uh, variable here called uh, at kill. And we're gonna do uh, select that uh, equals itself plus um, you know a kill statement for each of the session IDs uh, in the session table and so that's going to really help us to to get control of the situation we're going to use that uh, sys table and we're going to use the dm exec uh, sessions uh, table and that's going to give us a nice query and then we'll do uh, where the database is equal to whatever our target database is and so you can do this at the database level make sure that you reduce that scope uh, or you could have un, unforeseen uh, things happening, uh, but definitely reduce that scope to you know your database. So in this case, it's CNN testing, and that's going to uh, kick everybody out. And that's exactly what we want to see there. And so what are we going to do once we have our statements created? Well, we are going to execute those, and we can just do that as an execute variable and uh, that is going to do it for us. And so there's our declare uh, creating our variable. This is the select that we're putting together and that's from that sessions table where the database ID is equal to our database. And then we're just gonna 
execute that kill command for each of those uh, sessions and we hit go and boom it, it has kicked everybody out at least temporarily they can reconnect at this point so um, it's a good idea to move at that point you can go ahead and grab your you know detach or admin that you need to do and run it in this case we've detached the database and so that's going to detach the uh, MDF and LDF files and uh, we still have our sessions open here but now we can see uh, not everything is hunky-dory on on the uh, access front-end side now that particular file had already completed its commits uh, but this one did not so it's in the middle of doing some kind of uh, update and you can see now we get an ODBC call failed um, this message comes up saying the driver couldn't do what it needed to do and so all we can do is really hit OK we can hit close it'll say it'll give you an ODBC error and then you can't save this at this time so we have to close that in this case the uh, query results have not been refreshed and in this case we still have uh, record one and two open if I hit refresh and try to get those results again, obviously the database is detached. Uh, so there's nothing to connect to. And so that's going to uh, sort of dump these guys out as well. And so it gives you an idea of what you can see. And that's pretty much what we expected. Um, if people have not closed their, their uh, sessions, then they need to, uh, then they'll come back to some kind of error when they arrive the next day and they just hit OK and close it. The data, the data is completely safe um, unless they were in the middle of, of updating some major thing and left it open. Um, they will lose the immediate record that they were trying to put in there, um, but uh, we have kicked them out. Okay, so now we can close all of those files. You can see the lock files disappear from the access database folder there. And now we can go and perhaps you know, reattach our database uh, now that we've done some work on it, or maybe we're attaching a different um, set of, uh, you know, uh, database and log files. Um, could be any kind of administration that you're doing. Um, we're basically bringing the system back up now. And what we'll do is we will go ahead and, and put our files back and we're going to reattach those so that users can use the database again. And so in this case, I had the default folder destination for SQL Server there, and it put it way down into, you know, this uh, program files data folder. And so that's where we're going to get our MDF and LDF files again for our SQL Server database. And uh, that's going to be our CNN testing.mdf uh, file. And then we're going to put in the, uh, the LDF file, which is the log and I believe the default naming for that includes an underscore log on it. So let's go ahead and put that in. And those two files will make up our attach database command there. So we're putting our database and reattaching it to the server after we've done some kind of maintenance or something, or maybe we switched and you know created different database files, whatever it is. We hit go on the toolbar there, and now we've reattached that database um, just like it had been before. Note that in some cases you may have to account for orphaned users, uh, but in this case we don't have to. So let's open up that database uh, again with our access front end. You can see there's our three records that we created. That's exactly what we wanted to see, and that's how you can kick users out of SQL Express and SQL Server. Need additional resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.